I am a democratic socialist who was pulling for the Winklevi. You know, I was like, <laughs> this is fucked up. This week's selection was The Social Network, a 2010 film written by Aaron Sorkin, directed by David Fincher, and starring Jesse Eisenberg. It's the story of the founding of a website you guys might know about called Facebook, and it's basically about how Mark Zuckerberg, played by Jesse Eisenberg, was a total fucking asshole, how he kind of took the idea for Facebook from two people on Harvard's campus who had the idea before him and then he basically ousted his CFO and uh, it's also a story about how Harvard is a horrible hellhole of relentless douchebaggery. So uh, with that being said I want to start with our Harvard graduate Kieran Deal and ask her what she thought about this movie. I remember when this movie came out and I was like, fuck this movie. I hated this movie. I hated this movie with my heart. It's like when I thought about this movie, it filled me with rage. And re-watching it again last night while drinking heavily, I, you know, could appreciate the craft of the filmmaking more with, like, distance being away from, like, the school. But um, I still kind of hate this movie. What's the new hatred feel like? Well, okay, like, so when you were like, it's, it is a murderer's row of a cast, but it's like Andrew Garfield and Jesse Eisenberg and like basically it's, it's a lot of like same face white guy. Do you know what I mean? It's like a reinforcement of everything Hollywood does well, which is kind of create a single story narrative. And I understand that this is Mark Zuckerberg's story and they have an angle into it, but the treatment of women in this movie is negligible. There's like absolutely no diversity. The character that Andrew Garfield played, uh, um, Eduardo Saverin is a Brazilian Jewish kid who's like spent half of his life in Brazil. And uh, and the guy Divya, Divya is like an Indian and was played by Max Minghella. And there is like such an easy erasure uh, in this film that's just like, ah, we can't find anybody. Like, it's just all white guys. Or like, let's just make it all like, you know, just the standard typical like status quo of what Hollywood does. And I find that problematic because... Harvard is a massively diverse institution. Lisa, what did you think about this movie? Well, I'll say this. You know, I am a democratic socialist who was pulling for the Winklevi. You know, I was like, <laughs> this is fucked up. I was like, they're handsome. Um, I like they the are. one who wore the bandana. Um, <laughs> gentlemen of no, Harvard. Gentlemen of Harvard. The gentlemen. I was very into that. I was like, oh, that's cool. They're not going to be like, you know. No, I mean, I think that, uh, I mean, as someone who uh, didn't even try getting into Harvard but got denied by all the other Ivy League schools, this is kind of what I pictured. I mean, the problem for me in the movie is like, it's like uh, separating what's the movie and what's just history that I'm appalled by. And so, I mean, I personally, right. as someone who has never had a Facebook account, um, I forgot that all of Facebook was founded on fucking misogyny by a slam book. Facebook was a slam book. Mark Zuckerberg was just an angry fucking asshole. He wasn't even a loser. He made himself a loser by being a dickhead and by treating her badly, by treating his girlfriend badly. And uh, so I'm glad that she never succumbed, right? But, like, you know, there were just, to your point, though, like, the over-sexualization. There's not a single smart woman in this movie. Like, there's, it's like ev every portrayal of women in this movie is like, <laughs> I'm on a fuck truck. Like, <laughs> uh, lesbians <laughs> kissing. Like what, <laughs> like, what is this? Like, what is, you think nobody was taking comp psych classes? You think he didn't know women at this school? Like, it's actually fucking offensive. Like, what are you doing? It's so clear to me that the entire, I'm getting angrier than I told I, myself I would. <laughs> I, I can like feel the rage, but like it's the the entire the entire infrastructure of that film to me is like top down, so clearly like white men making a movie by and for white men that just erased literally every other part of that experience and wasn't even 
trying a little bit. I would also like to say there is one smart woman in the movie. She just went to BU. <laughs> <laughs> which is where, where AOC went, which is where AOC went. So like, let's right, not pretend that where, smart people don't go there. Where Mark Zuckerberg says, you don't have to study. Why do you keep saying I don't have to study? Because you go to BU. <laughs> I found it to be a really entertaining film. Like it was... Yeah, the subject matter is not something that that is that interesting to me because it mostly makes me angry. But I was entertained the whole time. The performances were really good. The filmmaking was great. The soundtrack was maybe too good because it made these guys look yeah. cool, cooler than they were. Uh, keep Trent Reznor and Mark Zuckerberg s- separate worlds to me. Um, but you know, it 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 told a story that's just sort of like one that gets told over and over again with the founding of a massively successful company, which is that the person that's willing to play the dirtiest and the person whose desire for control and power outweighs their aversion to shame is always going to be the person that wins. On that note, let's move into the characters. Let's talk about uh, who you think the biggest asshole in this movie was. Who do you think the most likable, least asshole person was in this movie. The Winklevosses. Really? They were just two guys with an idea. Look, in any other world, they would be a repellent. But honestly, uh, it was their idea. It was their idea. And they handled it, and they sued him, and like, you know, they got, I think, the equivalent of $65 million at the time pre-IPO, which is worth billions now. But like of everybody, I feel like they were the ones who actually had the idea. Um, I thought that Army Hammer as the Winklevi were, because they were so perfectly cast and it was such a great performance by them, I like find them asshole but relatable. Like the moment that they don't win the race and it's so dramatic when like <laughs> Divya, like Max Minghella turns his head and he's like, oh, like how could they lose this crew race in England? Oh, we flew out here. With Prince Albert. There? Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss to that. Oh, loved it. <laughs> loved that moment. Forgot yeah. and loved. Loved. Um, I think that Rooney Mara as uh, Erica, Mark Zuckerberg's ex, was one of the few morally good people in the movie. So I would say that she is a hero. I would also say Rashida Jones's character, the attorney who's only in her second year, is also... There's nothing wrong with her. She's like one of the only nice people in the movie. One of the lawyers is this woman who at one point goes... $18,000? Yes. In addition to the $1,000 you'd already put up? Yes. A total of $19,000. And then Mark goes... Hang on. I'm just checking your math on that. Yes. I got the same thing. (laughs) And I was like, that woman is the hero of this movie. (laughs) For not leaping across the table and strangling him right then. Who is uh, the biggest asshole? Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, for sure. Hands down. Fuck that guy. One of the biggest assholes in maybe in human history. Um, We haven't really talked about Sean Parker before uh, in this conversation. Oh, 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 yeah. He is virtuoso. Like, it is a great performance of a fucking douchebag. This fucking guy, Sean Parker, is nothing about him feels on the up and up. Even when, like, I like going out to a restaurant and with somebody who knows the wait staff and knows what's good on the menu. Like that's a, usually a fun experience for me, but like in the scene where he's trying to wine and dine them, it all seems so slimy to me. Justin Timberlake. I laughed out loud when I looked at the cast and I completely forgot he was in this film. And all I could keep thinking of when he came on screen was a man in the woods. That's all I could think of <laughs> was this man in the woods album. And I just, he brought me great joy in this film. Um, he I mean, brought was, me great joy, but it might, it might have been for very different reasons than you. Like, I don't know if I was laughing with or at the movie. I don't know what my complicated set of emotions were when I was watching Justin Timberlake, but I felt more than I felt in, in maybe a decade. So thanks, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really good example of why you need to wait at least 10 years before you make a movie of something. Because yes. if they'd only waited a few more years, the story would have become a lot more interesting. It wouldn't have just mm. been the story of like a virulent dickhead at Harvard who hates himself almost as much as he hates women. Like now they're <laughs> now their their company is like responsible for uh, inciting violence against groups of people in certain countries. It is responsible for 
uh, allowing bad actors to manipulate information and manipulate the political process. I would say Facebook could, it, it's responsible for spreading misinformation about the pandemic right now. I, I, I think Mark is a guy who really loved coding and he found a lot of like, I, I think he really loves that. I, I do, you know, and so, but the, the singular ambition and power behind that and how that can be such a destructive force when it's an amoral one. And that is what we've seen. Right. It's like the idea of amorality, because Facebook also had a massive role in Arab Spring. Right. And it's like but right. this idea that tech doesn't have any sort of social moral responsibility and that it's just a platform as opposed to a platform that has to have some sort of a philosophical or moral framework going into it, because it does impact the way that people can you know, operate and communicate and what our world becomes as a result of that. Um, and that amorality is like success at any cost. So like that's something that really struck me watching the film this time. <laughs>